working in the spirit of the Golden Empire. This is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Alex Fisher. It is a rare but potentially life-threatening infection. But this morning, the head of Kern County Public Health addressed supervisors about the county's preparedness for combating typhoid. 17's Aton Wallace was at the meeting and joins us now with what the public health department is saying. Aton? Well, Alex, right off the bat, let me tell you, County Public Health Services Director Matt Constantine says, yes, the county is prepared to deal with a potential typhoid outbreak should it come here to Kern County. Now, during his presentation, Constantine also added there are no known cases of typhoid in Kern County. And with that out of the way, let's explain what typhoid is. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, typhoid or typhoid fever is a bacterial infection that can lead to high fever, diarrhea, and vomiting. And yes, it can be fatal. The infection is caused by a specific type of salmonella bacteria, often passed on through contaminated food and drinking water, and it is prevalent in places where hand washing is less frequent. And that is why some have expressed concern that the infection could spread with our growing homeless population. Chairman of the Board of Supervisors David Couch requested that Constantine make today's presentation after reports surfaced that at least one Los Angeles police officer contracted the disease while working at the department's central station in downtown Los Angeles. Now, today we caught up with Assistant Division Director of Health Services here in Kern County, Kimberly Hernandez, about what you can do to prevent the infection. Technically speaking, if you had a person with it, they could pass it to other people. However, if you're using, you know, basic sanitation, washing your hands um, and and staying clean in general, um, there is a much lower risk of transmitting uh, typhoid fever. Now, also important to note, Hernandez says the salmonella that causes typhoid fever is not commonly found in the U.S. In fact, most cases of typhoid fever are contracted when traveling abroad. So if you plan to travel outside the country, she encourages you to check the CDC website where you can find out if typhoid is more prevalent at your final destination. Now, she tells me vaccines for the infection are available. In the newsroom, Aton Wallace, 17 News. Aton, thank you. It was a close call for a group of local veterans headed to our nation's capital. 55 Vietnam vets traveling on flight number 39 of Honor Flight, Kern County, met at Garces Memorial High School this morning before heading to the airport. But the bus was running late and was not going to make it to the airport in time. But volunteers with Honor Flight say Southwest Airlines held the plane for more than an hour. Volunteers also say the airline company gave every Honor Flight Hub tickets for future journeys. Now, this will be a quick trip. The vets will be back on Thursday, and Honor Flight is asking you to come and welcome them home. This flight gets back a bit earlier than Honor Flight trips usually do. It's scheduled to land at Meadows Field at 6.30 Thursday evening. And there will be a welcome home celebration at Garst. It's, it's always neat to see. They held the flight yeah, bravo, for all Southwest these vets. Airlines. Absolutely, because I think they even get fined. If they have these unnecessary uh, delays. so I, d- I don't know the rules and regulations, but I'll Very impressive, is, though. Yeah. yeah. Police are investigating a deadly shooting in South Bakersfield that happened just after 11 o'clock last night on Wilson Road near the intersection of South H Street. The scene was very active earlier this morning when detectives left. Police say last night they got several calls about a possible shooting. When officers arrived, they found a man lying in the road. They say he'd been shot several times. Paramedics rushed him to the hospital where he later died. BPD says they do not have any suspects in custody and there is limited information. Uh, It's very early in the investigation, so we're still looking for possible motives and uh, involved parties. Uh, We do not have any reports of any other uh, injuries. Detectives are asking anyone with information about the shooting to call police at 327-7111. And this brings the total number of homicides in Kern County to 41, according to our Kern County Homicide Tracker. That's down from 54, the number of homicides there were recorded at this time last year. 2018 was the deadliest year on record. We keep track of all these cases and share what we've learned about the victims. You can find that on our website, kgt.com. Just click on the homicide icon. A desperate search continues for a missing 12-year-old girl. Bakersfield police say Charity Dean was last seen in the 600 block of East 4th Street around 1 a.m. yesterday. Dean is considered a runaway and at risk because of her age. She was last seen wearing a blue shirt, blue jeans, and blue shoes. If you have any information on her whereabouts, call police at 327-7111. Bail was denied for a to have to be woman accused of killing her ex. Police say Wendy Howard shot and killed her ex-husband, Kelly Pitts, on June 5th. 
The shooting happened after she reported him to police for allegedly molesting their 16-year-old daughter. Howard also says Pitts molested her older daughter. Police investigated those claims back in 2006, but the DA never filed charges. Right now, Howard is behind bars, being held on $1 million bail. She requested that amount be reduced, but a judge denied their request this morning. A man who threatened employees at a downtown coffee shop pleaded in court today. You may remember the owners at Blue Oak Coffee described the frightening moments back in April. They say they'd been open for less than an hour when a man came inside and threatened to rape them. Police arrested the man they say made those threats. He's 23-year-old Joshua Harris. Harris pleaded no contest to a felony charge assault uh, and faces a year in jail. A charge of making threats was dismissed. A search for two teenage boys who went missing in the Kern River resumed this morning. The 15- and 19-year-old were last seen going into the river near the Keysville South campgrounds on Sunday. The sister of the 19-year-old told 17 News their family is at a complete loss as a fun Father's Day weekend getaway turned into a tragic waiting game. She says the 15-year-old is her cousin. The family says they visit Keysville every year and the teens swim in the river. Search crews were are were in, uh, out in force yesterday, and they plan to keep looking throughout the day. As the search for the teens continues, we're asking the question, should the government begin restricting access to the Kern River? It's something that's been done in Fresno County near the Kings River. One man we spoke with says the government should not restrict access. He believes people need to make decisions for themselves. We should be free to enjoy this river. I don't like government telling people they can't do something. We should be free to be stupid. It's a liberty. That's unfortunate. Government has no business telling us what we can and can't do. County officials say even if they sought to restrict access, it would be a logistical nightmare. The Kern River has hundreds of unofficial access points. Some of those are on state land. Some of those are in county property. Some of them are federal property. And then still yet more are on private property. Instead, the county has decided to take the approach of educating people about the dangers of the river. They say always wear a life vest and never use pool floats in those swift conditions. State officials are bracing themselves for an upcoming decision by the Supreme Court about another controversy, the debate over a citizenship question appearing on the 2020 census. With or without the question, state leaders say they plan to push several strategies to count everyone here in California from statewide ads to working with community groups at the local level. Congressional seats and funding are on the line, which is why every person being included is so important. The Public Policy Institute says California has more immigrants than any other state. The mayor of Sacramento says it will all come down to trust. It requires the right community-based organization, trusted organization, to engage and make sure that people know that they'll be protected and that by being counted, they're not putting themselves at risk. The census test is underway. It surveys about half a million households nationwide to help fine-tune the official process, which begins in April. The Supreme Court is set to make a decision about the question by the end of this month. And you can talk about that issue and any others you may have on your mind during an open house with State Senator Shannon Grove. The Republican senator is inviting you to her Bakersfield office on Truxton Avenue from 5 to 7 tonight. She's billing this as an opportunity for voters in the district to learn more about how government can work for you. Senator Grove is also inviting you to attend to bring a new or gently used fan to be donated to seniors in the district living on fixed incomes. But a fan donation is not required to attend tonight's meeting. The president is holding his re-election campaign's kickoff rally in Orlando later tonight, and the crowded Democratic field is hitting the trail ahead of their first debate in Miami next week. Here's NBC's Peter Alexander. Tonight, it's official. The 2020 presidential race is on, with President Trump holding a re-election kickoff rally in Orlando and releasing this ad debuting on Fox News. We love this country. We love Donald Trump. Promises made, promises kept. While Democratic candidates are sharpening their attacks, getting ready for the long haul. I'm not spending my time behind closed doors with a bunch of corporate lobbyists. I'm spending my time building a grassroots organization 
that looks like the rest of America. Thousands of diehard Trump supporters are expected here tonight. I love it that he's getting things done. Almost four years to the day from kicking off his campaign. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. This time around, the president is once again poised to make immigration a central issue. Tweeting Monday night, next week ICE will begin the process of removing the millions of illegal aliens who have illicitly found their way into the United States. They will be removed as fast as they come in. Campaign aides say it's part of a larger message, along with his touting his administration's record on jobs and trade. But it comes amid new polling numbers showing the president behind the top six Democratic candidates and the Trump campaign purging three of its pollsters after an internal poll of 17 battleground states became public, showing the president trailing Joe Biden in several races. Biden in Washington vowing to take the fight to some of those key states. First of all, I plan on campaigning this out, and I believe we can win Texas and Florida if you look at the polling data now. Doesn't mean it's a, it's a marathon. It's a long way off. Peter Alexander reporting. Welcome back. A ninth American has died while visiting the Dominican Republic. A New Jersey man who was there celebrating a friend's birthday was found unresponsive in his hotel room Thursday. NBC's Morgan Chesky has more. Another tropical vacation ending in tragedy for an American tourist. The maid opens the door screams, slams the door, my brother is on the floor, dead. The body of 55-year-old Joseph Allen of New Jersey found last Thursday. His brother says he skipped dinner that night. After telling friends he was traveling with, he wasn't feeling well. Allen was staying at the Terra Linda Resort, where he had stayed many times before. NBC News reached out to the resort for comment, but has yet to hear any response. Allen is the ninth American to have died under mysterious circumstances while visiting the island in the past 18 months. So far, the deaths have not been connected. But the popular tourist destination's food and beverage safety now under a microscope. I thought, something's not right. My father's a healthy 78-year-old. Jerry Curran died in January, falling ill after dinner and drinks at the Dreams Resort in Punta Cana. That resort stressed their standards, saying in a statement, Guest room minibars are only stocked with sealed bottles of liquor, which are purchased from a single licensed and bonded vendor. Less than two years ago, Dominican authorities shut down five labs manufacturing alcohol, seizing over 100 tanks of product unsuitable for human consumption. The U.S. State Department has declined to comment on reports that tainted alcohol could be responsible for any of the American deaths. I want to know what happened to my sister something isn't right in the Dominican for all these people to be dying. The Dominican Republic is responsible for my mother's death. Now, Joseph Allen's family joins a growing list of heartbroken people seeking answers. And important to note, while Dominican authorities have cases open into each of these incidents, the FBI is assisting them specifically with toxicology exams. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Tourism in the country are calling these incidents tragic but isolated. Morgan Chesky, NBC News. Miami. Welcome back in your 17 Business Watch and taking a look at stocks. The Dow Jones is up 371 points. This is a a pretty good day for Wall Street after President Trump announced that he will be meeting with Chinese President Xi later next week. And the S&P 500 is up 30, NASDAQ up 115. Meantime, checking oil prices, West Texas Intermediate is at $53.96 a barrel and Midway Sunset is at $58.43 a barrel. Now to a major announcement that could very well shake up the world's financial system. The social media giant Facebook says it will soon roll out a new digital currency called the Libra. Facebook dominates social media with 2.4 billion monthly users. Now it wants everyone to use a new digital currency that it's creating. The question remains though, given all its problems with privacy and security, would you trust Facebook to handle your money? NBC's Tom Costello has a look. 
The Facebook plan replaced the world's dollars, euros, francs, yen, and pesos with a new cryptocurrency called the Libra, used by people all over the world, cutting fees and exchange rates. Similar to payment apps Venmo and Zelle, you could use your phone to transfer Libra to friends, shop online, or pay at your local store. It's got the experts on CNBC buzzing. This is going to be the biggest thing that's happened to Facebook in years. This is going to be their attempt to be able to give away something that everybody in the world will love. 28 companies have already signed up to launch and govern the use of the Libra, including Visa, MasterCard, Uber, Lyft, eBay, Spotify, and PayPal, as Facebook now tries to take a bite out of Amazon's dominance in e-commerce. But analysts say years of hacks, privacy violations, and Russian trolls have undermined the public's trust in Facebook. On the dollar, there's in God we trust, and this is in cryptocurrency, do we trust Facebook? That's really the question. Facebook says it won't manage the new financial system. Instead, it's launching a subsidiary called Calibra to do that, saying Calibra will not share account information or financial data with Facebook or any third party without customer consent and promising strong protections in place to keep your money and your information safe. But wait, you ask, what about bitcoins? Trading in the cryptocurrency was temporarily halted as the value of Bitcoin fell about 20%. Super volatile and popular with cyber crooks. But without regulators, it's been slow to catch on for e-commerce. Facebook says the Libra will be pegged to real currencies with a regulatory system. Still, some cybersecurity pros are recommending a go-slow approach. My advice is, if you get an offer to start using Libra, proceed with caution. Let other users be the guinea pigs. Tom Costello reporting. Should be very interesting to see how that all plays out. Welcome back. The Kern County Fair is just 92 days away, and we now know who will be headlining the concert series. The fair kicks off September 18th with Nelly taking the big stage. This year's theme is the food, the fun, the fair. Organizers say they have a full lineup from several musical genres. Performers include Belle Biv DeVoe, Josh Turner, Casey and the Sunshine Band, and a lot more. We've posted a complete list of performances on our website, kget.com. So you can take a look and see if your favorite performers are going to be at the Kern County Fair.